you guys? And on today's episode of 30 Minute Check Ins, we're gonna be watching See You, see, see you Yesterday. That's the name of it. I was gonna say See You Tomorrow. Either way, I have yet to see this film. Um, I'm pretty sure I know what the plot is though, which is basically about this black girl who I think is like into science and stuff like that. And she makes a time machine and her brother passes away from police brutality and she basically is using her time machine to try and get back in time to save her brother. That is pretty much all I know of the film. Besides that, I've heard a couple of things, mostly on Twitter. I've heard that the ending is really, really bad. Um, I don't know what could possibly be the ending that it would be like a notoriously known for having a bad ending. But my assumption is, is that maybe in the film, what I'm expecting is that it's gonna be a lot of trial and error. Like she's going to do the time machine multiple times and go back in time multiple times. And it's gonna have like a butterfly effect. But overall in totality, um, I feel like the brother will keep dying. The only way I can see the ending being bad is that she just kind of never is able to discover a way to save her brother. Like it is just what it is. Like, and she just goes back in time numerous times to save him and then she just discovers that there's no way to save him. Um, that's the only way I can see like maybe people not liking the ending. I'm hoping that the ending is not bad, but we'll see. I read the director um, commenting back to people on Twitter that have at him about the ending and he seems like really like hurt. Like his feelings are really, really hurt that a lot of people don't like the ending. So I'm hoping that I like it because I can understand that sometimes filmmaking or filmmakers, their vision can just be misunderstood. So I'm just hoping that it's just a thing where it wasn't happily ever after and people are just mad about that. But I don't know, I don't know. I'm, I'm giving it the benefit of the doubt because I don't know. I'll be right back with you guys with the official description of the film before I dive in, so I'll be right back. All right, you guys, so I have the official description. The movie has a 95% rating on Rotten Tomatoes, which is actually pretty good. Two teenage science prodigies spend every spare minute working on their latest homemade invention, backpacks that enable time travel. When one of their older brothers is killed, they put their unfinished product to the test to save him. And the director is Stefan Bristol, and the producer is Spike Lee. So I actually really, really like Spike Lee. So I will be watching this, and I will be back in 30 minutes, and I will let you guys know what I think about the film. But hopefully it's good. It's an hour and 27 minutes, so I should be doing three different check-ins with you guys, okay? 3.28 a.m. Hey, what's up, you guys? So I actually changed location, so just kind of ignore that. But I just watched the first 30 minutes of See You Yesterday. And so far, I actually really like the movie. I think that the characters are really realistic. I think the dialogue is really funny. It's fresh. I think the directing is really cool too. I believe this is Stefan's future directorial debut. So he's doing a really great job if this is his first time directing a, a feature length film. Um, I did like CJ, but she's kind of wildin'. I didn't like how she did that whole shit when she went to the past. They kind of promised that they were gonna do, weren't gonna do anything major to mess up any of their time travel. And she was over here wilding, throwing drinks on her ex Jared twice in a row. So I don't understand what that whole thing was about. I understand that she has angry issues that she needs to work on, but that was just mad childish. And I was like, girl, how can you be like a damn science, like magician, fucking Albert Einstein, and you over here acting childish as hell like you on the Jerry Springer show? <laughs> Besides that, it's cool. Sebastian is a cool character. Her brother is a cool character. I'm actually like a little disappointed that this movie has so much potential and has such great characters and like it's about to uh, have something tragic happen in it. So I'm like not looking forward to the, the scene with the brother dying at all and I actually think that that's about to happen right now because where I am in the film, the brother and his friend just left the party and they're walking home because Jared was there. So I'm I'm assuming that at this point, he's probably gonna run into the officer and that's when the confrontation's gonna happen. But I am excited to see where the film goes. And like I said, I do enjoy the characters. So I'm still sure that the movie itself is gonna be enjoyable. I'm just not really looking forward to seeing that scene in particular. But I'll be back in 30 minutes. And I'll, get, I'll let you guys know what I think. 8.01 p.m. All right, I'm back after another 30 minutes. I'll see you yesterday. And once again, I'm actually really enjoying the film. I'm not gonna lie. Like I said, the characters, the dialogue, it's really, really fresh. I think the acting's really good. I think it's interesting that one of the times that she went back, something happened to Sebastian in retrospect instead of her brother. And now her brother's alive in this new version of the future. I think that's really interesting. And now her brother is talking about how it's affecting him and how he thinks it should have been him. So I actually really like the film so far. I'm wondering if maybe Calvin's going to like sacrifice himself and they're going to like reverse it and I don't know, instead Calvin's gonna die again, I don't know. What I'm thinking though is 
they should just try to go back in time or she should try to go back in time so that she stops herself from ever having that entire issue or confrontation with Jared in general. Because if you think about it, Jared is the issue or is the main reason why all this is even happening. If it hadn't been for Jared, then her brother wouldn't have left the party. And um, yeah, even if those guys had robbed the bank or robbed the bodega, it wouldn't have even mattered because Calvin would have been at the party anyway. So that's my thoughts. I'm wondering if that's one of the versions that she's going to do, just going back in time and then trying to avoid that whole thing in general. So we have another 27 minutes left into the film. So when I get back, the film should be over. And I guess we'll see if I like the ending or not. Like I said, a lot of people don't like the ending. Another thing I'm really happy about is that they're not showing any of the murder scenes. Yeah, the film deals with black trauma, but I'm happy that they're not showing the actual murders of the the people and that the only dead body so far shown in the film has been sebastian and that scene itself wasn't too too graphic in my opinion so yeah i'll be back in 30 minutes and i'll let you guys know what i think about the film 12 o'clock midnight hey guys so i just finished see you yesterday and uh, remember when i said that the only way that it could end terribly was if the brother just kept dying over and over again Okay, so I found a worse ending, which was that. What the fuck was that exactly? I don't know if you guys know what that was. If you guys do, go ahead and leave some comments on what you think the interpretation was. I'm gonna let you guys know what I think it was. The first one is that um, maybe all along, CJ should have went to the past by herself because whenever she brought somebody along with her, somebody ended up getting hurt. So maybe this time with her going by herself, nobody else will be able to get hurt. My second interpretation for what I think the ending could have meant is that whenever somebody goes into the past, something bad happens or somebody dies. So maybe it's illuminating that something bad is gonna happen to um, CJ this time. So, and they also didn't show how far back she went. I don't know if the director purposely left it up for interpretation or like I said if it actually did have an, a true ending and it just wasn't really clear. Another thing that I wasn't really feeling about the film or the ending in general was Calvin, like Calvin's character. I was not understanding why in that last scene, why was Calvin acting like a white person in a scary film? Like if you, if black people come up to you or anybody comes up to you talking about some run, we need to get out of here. Why are you trying to argue with them? Especially after they showed him his whole like funeral shit or whatever. Like. That wasn't enough to shake you up and want to get you the fuck up out of there. Like, this is your sister. I would have understood if it was some, like, strangers or just some random people coming up to him, showing him this thing, talking about some, like, oh, we gotta go, like, follow me. But this was your sister and Sebastian. These was your niggas. But also, you know your sister is, like, a genius. Like, you know that she makes time travel technology and shit. So why is it such a surprise that she would come back in the past and try to save your ass? Like, he was just acting hella clueless. I hope overall though that Stefan continues to write and direct films because I did really enjoy it. I did think if this was his feature length, first feature length film that he did a really really great job. Besides that, I also felt like this film reminded me a lot of a Spike Lee joint and I don't know if that's because he was the producer and maybe he lent some like hand into the writing process because I did read that it was written by Stefan but overall the film did kind of give me a Spike Lee vibe. Um, but I liked it, and like I said, I do like Spike Lee films, so I wasn't opposed to it. And like I said, I liked how they didn't have a lot of violence, although it did feature the death of both Sebastian and Calvin. They weren't too gruesome, so I was kind of okay with that. Let me know what you guys think. Um, like I said, if I had to give it a rating out of a 10, I would give it a 7 or an 8. Um, overall, I would recommend for other people to watch this film because, like I said, it was really fresh. It's different from a lot of other films that are out right now. When it comes to black cinema, I feel like this was done well. I feel like the production value was really good. Um, it featured a lot of futuristic type of things, so a lot of like green screens were probably involved, and I thought that it was done really well. That it was editing really well, and um, I don't know, I like the film. So like, subscribe, let me know what you guys think of the film, let me know what other films you guys would like for me to see, and I will see you guys next time on 30 Minute Checkings.